Our identity is in Christ. And so how does that look in our life? How does that look in our relationships? Welcome back to the Identity in Christ devotional based on the book of Ephesians. My name is Aaron Bublitz. I serve as pastor at Heritage Lutheran Church in Gilbert, Arizona, and it's a privilege and a joy to be working our way through this book of Ephesians with you. Uh, we are near the end of chapter 4. We're going to almost uh, finish chapter 4 today. Uh, today we're going to read verses 29 through 31. Paul writes, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful, helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. So our identity is in Christ. We've been hearing that throughout this wonderful book that God chose us from eternity, predestined us, has loved us forever, brought us into his family through the work of Jesus Christ, through the shedding of his blood and that forgiveness of sins, giving us the faith to believe that this is all true, taking us from spiritual death to spiritual life, making us alive in Christ Jesus, uniting us with our fellow believers in the church. And all this that God has done for us to give us this new identity, this new purpose, this new reason to live, uh, this, this new joy that is found not in the circumstances of our life and, and in what we do, but what is done for us. And that impacts how we live our life then, how we, how we live in our relationships. And in this uh, end of chapter four and getting into chapter five in the next few days, we're getting to hear what this looks like, how, how this impacts our lives, that we have this new identity in Christ. And here in verse 29, it says, because of our identity in Christ, we are to not let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouths. As God's people, as those who are clothed in the righteousness of Christ, right? talk that is unwholesome, that is not beneficial, that is not helpful, that, that is harmful and hurtful, uh, shouldn't come out of our mouth because it doesn't glorify God. It doesn't show love for neighbor, anything that is unwholesome shouldn't come out of our mouth to other people. But instead, instead of unwholesome talk, only what should come out of our mouths is what is helpful for building others up according to their needs to be a benefit to those who listen. So just, just kind of think about all those different aspects that are in there. What's helpful, what's gonna build others up according to their needs, and it's gonna benefit them. And so where's the focus? The focus is not on getting off your chest what you want to say, how you want to give it to this person, how you're going to put them in their place, and, and I told you so. And it, No, it's what's helpful, what's going to build others up according to what they need to hear. I mean, we may you think that you know, we want them to hear this, but maybe they don't need to hear it, and that it's going to be beneficial to them. So when you keep that in mind, dear Christian, when that's your goal, that my words, I want to help, I want to build up, I want this to be what they need, and I want it to benefit them, right? We're much, much more careful in, in what we say. We're much more careful in how we say what we say. Because the goal is to show love. Love for God and love for this person I'm talking to. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure my words. I'm going to carefully... Uh, consider what comes out of my mouth right? to be sure it's helpful, beneficial, and it's what they need to hear to build them up. Verse 30, here Paul writes to us, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Right? That He says that Holy Spirit, you were sealed with him for the day of redemption. We've heard that earlier in this, in this letter. Right? We're sealed with him until that final day of redemption, that is, that is ours, that Holy Spirit within us is that proof that final redemption in, in, in eternal life is waiting for us. We're sealed with him. That's our, that's our assurance. Don't grieve him. Don't grieve that Holy Spirit. And, and how do we grieve the Holy Spirit? When we hear the word and we don't believe it. When we hear the word and we don't live it. When we say one thing and we do another. 
when we know who we are in Christ Jesus, but yet we just live for self. Right? We're, we're not living according to that new self. We're not putting off that old self. Right? That's grieving the Holy Spirit of God. It's spurning his work. It's, it's denying his work on our hearts and, and what he has made us to be. It should call us to repentance, shouldn't it? The times that we've grieved the Holy Spirit of God, the times that we have, we have chosen not to hear the word and just do what we want, the times when we've heard the word but we've just let it go one ear out the other, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. You're sealed with him for the day of redemption, right? There's some gospel in there. That, that's the truth. You're sealed with him. He is your assurance, that proof that, that God loves you. You are forgiven. You are his very own. So don't grieve him. When you hear this word, let it take root in your hearts and show in your words and in your lives. He says then, following up verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, all rage, all anger, all brawling, all slander, along with every form of malice. These things don't the life and belong in the life of a Christian and one who has their identity in Christ. Right? That, that bitterness, right? that, that we want to hold on to these grudges and, and be bitter towards people, that, that rage, that uncontrolled anger. And then he mentions anger here. Right? Just yesterday, we heard about, about anger not always being sinful, but that, that, that anger that's going to lead you to sin. Right? Get rid of it. And, and, and don't hold on to it because it's, it's going to give that devil a foothold. Right? That brawling, that fighting, that slander, that lying against others and every other form of malice. Right? Just throws everything else in there. This does not belong in the life of a Christian. Get rid of it. Have nothing to do with it because that is not who you are. That is not who you are, dear Christian. Instead, we are holy in God's sight. We are blameless through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are God's own. We are his family right now and forever. And so we want to live like that. So we repent daily for the times that we have let unwholesome talk come out of our mouths when our words have not built others up and instead tore them down, uh, for the times that we have grieved the Holy Spirit, for the times that we have let bitterness and rage and anger and brawling and slander and malice fill our hearts and our words and our lives, we repent. And again, Look to that perfect life and death and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, to give us peace, to give us forgiveness, to give us a new life, a new outlook on life, a new purpose to live, new joy, a new identity. Tomorrow we'll get to hear what we are called to be instead, what we are called to be in Christ Jesus, knowing who we are, what we have been made to be, to put off these things, and then to live for him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you that you lived a perfect life of, of gentleness and kindness and, and compassion and, and your words always built up and were beneficial to those who would listen. And you did that because we don't. Because how often we're, we're filled with anger and bitterness and, and, and slander and, and malice and, and unwholesome talk. And then you went to that cross and you died for all of these sins for us so that we might be forgiven. And then you were raised to life to assure us that we have been raised to be something new to in you, in this new identity we have in you and in your righteousness. So help us daily to repent of our sins and to turn to you for strength and peace and, and empower us that we might live for you and for your glory to show your love to the world. We pray this all in your saving name. Amen. Again, wonderful to be with you here. God be with you until we meet again. Bye-bye.